Some people can't see the forest for the trees, so you better make your trees look really good. How to make great looking pine trees on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and today I want to talk to you about trees. Specifically, I want to talk to you about pine trees that you can make for your layout. Now, my layout has about 20 linear feet of central Colorado Rocky Mountain scenery, which means that I need a lot of pine trees. In fact, that clip at the opening of this video, that short section of scenery on my layout has over 125 pine trees in it. That means that, by my estimate, I think I'll need between six and 800 pine trees to fully scenic my mountain section of my layout. For me, that translates into I need a way to make them fast and to make them cheap. Now, you can buy pine trees commercially from a number of different manufacturers. The quality ranges from very, very nice to okay to rather poor and cheap and plastic looking. This here is an example from Woodland Scenics. It's kind of a middle-of-the-road price range and quality-wise as far as pine trees go. It's a nice-looking pine tree, but if you look at pictures of pine trees, usually they have an airy look. You can kind of see some daylight through them. You usually can see some gaps, and you just don't get that feel with this pine tree. Also, this pine tree comes in packages of 33, and they cost $35 a package, which translates into just a little over a dollar a piece. And some of the very, very nice pine trees can cost as much as three to five dollars a piece. That can get really pricey if you have much area that you want to cover with pine trees. But I have found a way to make pine trees like this one. They have a nice, light, airy feel. You can see some daylight through them. You can make gaps in them, make them look very, very realistic, make them look exactly like you want. And I can make these for about 20 cents a piece. Now, for some of you, I just got your attention. So let me show you how you can make pine trees like this by the dozen, really fast, really cheap, and fill your layout with beautiful pine trees. Most model railroad projects begin at the hobby shop, but this one begins at the grocery store here in the utensil aisle with these bamboo skewers. My store carries them in 11 and 3 quarters inches and 9 and 3 quarters inches lengths. For this project, the shorter length will do fine. Next, we're on our way to the local hardware store where we will make our way to the furnace filter section. First, here is what you do not want. These are accordion folded filters with cottony filler material. No, we want the inexpensive blue fibrous filters. They make similar ones that are more dense with white fibers, but we want the less dense blue ones. Better yet, your store may carry rolls of filter batting that you can buy by the foot. This remnant is 13 square feet and I bought it for just over $4. Now we need spray paint. I used to say the cheaper the better, but then Rust-Oleum came out with these camouflage colors which are perfect for tree armatures. I especially like this dark green-brown color. I begin with the bamboo skewers. These are a great model railroad product. I use them to stir hobby paint in jars, and they make great uncoupling tools in both N and HO scales. I keep several of them in key locations around the layout for just that purpose. But for now, they're going to make great pine tree trunks. The first step is to paint them. I use a chocolate brown and a light gray paint. The brown paint is a little lighter than I usually use, but it'll do. I'm using craft paint like you can get at Walmart for about 50 cents a bottle. First, I want to paint the trunks with a base coat of the brown. I want a nice heavy coat that completely covers the skewer, except for a couple inches at the bottom, which I leave as a handle. Let the brown dry. I paint a full package of 100 skewers at a time, and by the time I finish, the ones that I painted first are dry enough for the next step. Next, I use the light gray, and I dry brush the skewers. If you're not familiar with dry brushing, what you want is to load up your brush with paint and then on a piece of paper brush most of the paint off, leaving only a trace amount of paint on the brush. 
As you brush the trunk, the trace amount of paint will color the highlights and will leave brush strokes but will leave some of the base brown color showing through. Tree bark is usually gray in color, but the brown showing through gives you the sense of a bark texture. As you see, you can do a whole package of these in just a short amount of time. At this point, you want to let these dry completely before going on to the next step. I also like to paint a few toothpicks to make some small trees to add variety to my pine forest. While your trunks are drying, you can work on your branch material. I like to use a large pizza box as a painting palette for this step. I open it up and straighten out the flaps in the center. Then use tape on the sides and corners to make a nice rigid tray. This tray will serve, save a lot of mess and headache later on. With my tray made, I cut my filter material into pieces just large enough to fit into the tray. Usually the filter will have a dense, almost cloth-like mat of fibers on one or both sides of the bat. At this point, you want to remove that layer. Be careful not to pull any more fibers from the middle of the bat than you have to. This layer will make it difficult for paint to penetrate the batting and will not look natural on your trees. Taking my tray of filter bedding outside, I spray paint it with my dark color paint. I've used flat black, which works well enough, but this dark brown camo paint is my favorite. The important thing is that it is dark and flat. I usually wear a nitrile glove on my left hand as it is hard not to get some overspray and because you have to turn the bat over once it's painted on one side. As you can see, there are still some blue fibers showing, so a light coat is needed on the second side. When done, let this dry overnight, and then look it over carefully. There are usually still a few spots of blue showing. This is when I use a second lighter color of green to cover these spots, and to add a little color variation in the branches. When all the paint has dried completely, I cut the batting into strips. In N-Scale, I cut these strips about an inch to an inch and a quarter wide. In HO, you'll want something more like an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters strips. Using a box to catch my pieces, I then cut the strips into squares. I am nearly ready to start assembling my trees. Using a shallow box lid to catch the waste material, I start cutting V-shaped notches into all four sides of a square of filter material. I cut about a fourth of the way across the square. I then cut the point off of each corner of the square. When I'm done, the pieces look something like an iron cross. I put a dot of white glue in the center of the piece. Then putting the point of the skewer into the center of the glue, I push it through the piece of filter material and I work the filter material down to the level of the height that I want my tree to be. You want a variety of heights among your trees, but do some research and decide how tall you want them before you reach this step. 
I pull the top layers of the piece back up slightly to fluff the filter a bit so it's not too dense around the trunk. I then repeat this process, working my way up to the very point of the trunk. After cutting just a few squares, you'll have a fair amount of this loose waste filter material. This is good to use at the very point of your trunk. Put a drop of glue on the point of the trunk and work a small pinch of the material into the glue. Now let the glue on your tree dry for a couple hours before going on to the next step. When the glue is dry, look at your tree carefully. You'll see that there are still parts that look like sheets of furnace filter. To fix this problem, take a good pair of scissors and holding them vertically, cut into the material in places that look too much like sheets. This will create more of a branch structure. Work your way all the way around and up the tree. Next, cut the outer branches along the tree to, uh, from the bottom to the top to shape the tree. You do not want a perfect cone-like Christmas tree shape. Just trim it until the shape is pleasing to your eye. You will also see some fibers that run vertically along the trunk and look unnatural. Turn your scissors horizontally and cut these branches and tap the trunk periodically to shake loose excess loose material. You should end up with an armature that looks see-through and airy at this point. For the next step, you need a trash can and a box or paper bag to catch excess material. You need a can of inexpensive but strong hairspray. My favorite is this Aquanet All Weather Hold. That sounds pretty strong, doesn't it? You need some ground foam, to make the needles for your tree. For a base color, I like to use Woodland Scenic's green grass and weeds. And for highlights, I use burnt grass and yellow grass. For in scale, I use fine ground foam. For larger scales, you might want to use a medium ground foam, but you want it to look like needles, not leaves. So I think the finer the foam, the better. You need a shaker of some sort. I have some old baby food jars with holes punched in the lids. I don't think you can get these anymore, but spice containers and Parmesan cheese jars work well too. Hold your armature over the trash can and spray it all over with the hairspray until the branches are wet. Then using the box or bag to catch the excess material, sprinkle your green color onto the sides and bottoms of the branches until they are well covered. The excess can be reused to make more trees later. You can use one or two colors of green on your trees. I prefer to use one color per tree, but to vary colors between trees to give my forest some variation. I stay away from the conifer green foam as I think it looks too dark. When the green is covering the branches well, hold the tree upright and lightly sprinkle a light color only on the top of the branches. This will give the effect of sunlight shining on the branches as well as pine cones and browning needles within the tree. When you're happy with your tree, give it one more light pass with the hairspray. You'll probably have some ground foam stuck to the trunk. Wipe this away with your finger and then put the trunk down into a shallow cup for the tree to dry. When dry, your tree is ready for planting. You can cut the trunk to any desired length. Some pine trees grow branches all the way to the ground. But in the mountains, there are often several feet of trunk with no branches at all due to deep snow baits in the winter months. Some people use mounting pins on the base of their trunks, but I simply drill a hole in my scenery base and plant the trunk directly into it, using some scenery material to mask it if necessary. You can see I have a variety of shapes and colors of trees representing a variety of pines, and I also make a few trees with no green but only brown like this one brown and yellow foam that model dying or dead trees, which you always see in the forest. And here are a couple of the small trees that I made with the toothpicks I showed you earlier, and filter squares cut into fourths. Just a couple of these makes your forest look a lot more interesting. 
And the best thing about making these trees is you can do it while watching TV with the family. Well, I still have three or four hundred more pine trees to make for my layout, so if you'd like to practice this technique, feel free to come by and we'll practice together. But seriously, if you'll use this technique, I think you'll find it's a way that you can make a lot of beautiful pine trees really quickly. In fact, here are more than two dozen pine trees that I made in just a couple of evenings recently in front of the television. Also, with the materials that I've shown you from your local grocery store and hardware store, you'll find that you can cover a lot of territory on your layout with beautiful pine trees for not a lot of money. So I hope you'll give this technique a try. I want to invite you to come back to Ron's Trains and Things each week. On Tuesdays, we bring you new Model Railroad videos where we'll show you more techniques like this one, scratch building projects, and an upcoming tour of my layout. Starting this week on Fridays, I'm going to be bringing you Feature Fridays where I'm going to be showing you resources that will help you in your model railroading. I'm going to show you things like helpful tools that you can use, uh, some little known uh, model railroad manufacturers that are making some great products that very few people seem to know about as well as internet resources, things like videos on YouTube and other places, and resources for prototype in, uh, train information and model railroading layout building information that you will find invaluable to your model railroading efforts. You will not want to miss Feature Fridays, so I hope that you will join us. I hope that you have found this video both helpful and enjoyable. And if you have, please click the thumbs up and like this video. Let me know. Also, subscribe so you can see all of my upcoming videos. Most important to me, I hope that you'll go to the bottom of the page and leave a comment or a question in that comment section. I love to hear from you, and I always respond to your comments. Finally, in that expanded description right below the video, you'll find some information about my layout, the Texas, Colorado, and Western, and the Facebook page that I have dedicated to it, as well as how you can support Ron's Trains and Things. Well, that's all for today, but I hope that you will join me again very, very soon on Ron's Trains and Things, and until then, I hope you have a great day.